Mm. I didn't do anything to him. What? Well, he just walks in here. I think I'm allergic to Valeria. <laughs> la, 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 la. No. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> Maybe it's just fall allergies. You never know. That's right. Just because I sneezed. Right, because... Be, okay, no, because you said you made me sneeze, meaning that I made you sneeze, meaning that you're allergic to me, <laughs> whatever that means. That makes no sense. <laughs> I can't with these two people. I just can't. It's just, Hold you on. know. He said he was allergic to me. Who says that? I started sneezing when I came near her. <laughs> And now I'm starting to itch. Oh, man. Oh, that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, man. Hi, everybody. We're back. We're back. <laughs> Welcome to r r We are on Job Chapter 11. We're glad that you could join us. And again, just going over allergies, seasonal allergies, people allergies, <laughs> apparently. I and... don't think it's people allergies. Actually, that's a lie. Yeah. I feel like that's possible. But not in the sneezing kind of way. Well, apparently it <laughs> is. Oh, no. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> anyway, so we are continuing our study on Job chapter yes. 11 today. And moving on as as we carry on with uh, Job's conversations with his, his friends. His friends that have been there with him. And just kind of the ebb and flow of the back and forth of conversations of who did what. What should have been done. And what needs to be done. And what I don't have to do, what I demand, and, you know, it just, it never ends. Like, this conversation seems like it's just constantly back and forth, and, you know, and who's in the right, who's in the wrong, I guess, or, you know, is it out of spite, is that out of encouragement, is it really trying to, you know, help a fellow brother out, or or is it just to say, oh, well, look, I know more than you, or God knows more than you, or, you know, who knows, right? It just keeps going back and forth, so that's where we're at any thoughts on Job so far? This book so far, Ms. Val? Well, it's the last chapter you read, 10? Yeah. It was, uh... I wasn't here for 10. I think, I don't know, 9 or 10, one or the other. I think it's interesting. I think now that he's, like, seeing, like, what he feels, not like he's taking too much of it, it's, like, changed his view on, like, yeah. his faith. He stays strong for a little while, but it's kind of slowly coming apart because he doesn't know what he's done. Right. Yeah, it's, it's kind of driving him crazy, right? What do you think so far, Gus? Yeah, I think it's weighing on him. It's weighing on him, and um, it's kind of like one of those things where you, I guess, they see their cycles, I guess, of warning, and their cycles, like, you, yeah. You, 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 I don't know what they are, but, like, they, they say you, you don't accept it or you don't think it's real. Or, like, different or stages, yeah. right? Like, stages of grief. Stages of grief. Is that, is grief. that what it there is? You go. Yes. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's goodness yeah, this, def- this brother is definitely going through it mm-hmm. all those crazy i mean I, I i don't i couldn't tell you what stage he's in but i mean maybe denial or or accept not maybe not acceptance but just questioning i don't know i don't know what the mm-hmm. stages are if you know what the stages are please let us know i'm not sure but but it sounds um, like he's going through something like you're going that. through something he's, yeah. he's he's going through it we'll, we'll say that much mm-hmm. and uh, you know and and again it's just it's just seeing the the magnitude of this conversation where is it going to carry what is it going to lead to you know it's mm-hmm. it's it's been very uh, it's been eye opening to say the least so mm-hmm. job chapter 11 is where we'll be at today and but before we get started uh if you have any prayer requests or praises uh please drop them in the chat and as always if you have any questions or comments concerns that you may have please please drop them in the chat as well and we'll make an attempt to try to answer all questions as best as we possibly can. So uh, we'll start with prayer request praises here. I'll start with you, Ms. Val, and then we'll work our way to Mr. Gus and myself. Okay. Um, I have a couple of, like, both. For a prayer request, I pray for Olivia, Olivia Gravy. Mm. And, um, oh, well, she's with her grandpa over there. Mr. Mm. David's over there with Mr. her. Mr. David, yes. And, um... I just want to pray because she's going through a really hard time. She was texting me the other day, and you know there are people out there who just love to bully others, and it's not mm-hmm. it's not a good thing. And it broke my heart because you know people can, can be so cruel, mm. and it's and that is true. It's, it's horrible. So I, I do want to pray for her. Like I always want to pray for her. I always right. continue to pray. Um, 
and that God may reach her. And pray for Genevieve, for their family, the little boy he's growing up. Oh, oh gosh, man, so I wonder what big. he looks like now. I, I have like pictures. three, three, four? Yeah, like, yeah, it's been so long. It's been a bit, And yeah. she sent wonder, me I pictures. Him. Like, it was for my birthday. They sent me a video of them yeah. saying happy mm-hmm. birthday. And he was like, I love you, Val. And I was just Aww. like, he's so big. <laughs> yeah, it's cute little baby. Um... I'd like to pray for schools. I have competition for an all girls welding thing coming up. I yeah. got my solo already for choir. Mm. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be working very hard the next like two, three months. Yeah. Um yeah. which is insane. But yeah, I'd like to pray for that and that, you know, God will be with me like the whole way through. And um a couple of praises my friends have been doing pretty good. Um oh I'd like <coughs> to pray for my friend Dante. He um he sprained his ankle. It's really hard to lock well Praise that he's lost all the way he needed for his surgery and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but he's he keeps on hurting his legs and it's really been hurting him. So I mm. hope that, you know, I pray mm. that he'll heal and stuff like that. But other than that, like my friends have been doing pretty good overall and yeah, I'm good. very proud of them. Excellent, excellent. Mr. Gus. Oh, I've got several as well. Um, first things first. Um, my daughters, my family, you know, they're they're healthy and what have you, but uh, my daughter is uh uh, 24 weeks um, this week, so hey. more than halfway there. Been yeah. there, yeah, Grandpa, Grandpa <laughs> Gus. Yeah, I can't believe it. I Grandma can't believe Lydia. It. Yep. Let's go. Uh, little, boy. little boy. A little boy. So, it's a boy. Little boy. Oh, so yeah, little boy. Um, and so just you know, keep uh, keep keep my daughter in, in, in yes. prayer, what have you, and a uh, uh, healthy child, and you know what have you. Um, also, uh, there's been a young man on my mind lately that uh, I work, uh, work with, you know, so the homeless and what have you. This yeah. young man, um, he's in desperate need of um, uh, substance abuse uh, counseling and what have you, and yeah. um, uh, just trying so hard to convince him to do it. He's never been in it, hmm. um, and, and just trying so hard because... The guy's got a lot of potential, but we also see where the drugs is going. Ugh. So when people say, you know, things like, well, it's just marijuana, or it's just that type, you know, I get it, it fine. All, it all leads to something, But, you know? yeah, those are gateways to other things that are bigger, and um, yeah. that's how he started. So um, just keep him in prayer as well. I can't, for obvious reasons, mention who it is or what okay. have you, but um, no uh, just know that uh, he's there, and uh, <clears throat> I'm praying that he uh, made the right decision and that he's in rehab this evening it's gonna get cold outside so yeah, it is. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for him and um just keep him in mind otherwise uh god has been so blessing i mean he's gonna uh, yeah the blessings are there and i i love him so much for that amen amen to that Gus. oh yeah so so much to go around for me as well mm-hmm. i mean just just uh, praises to to god for just just answering so many prayers for work for me in the last few weeks and uh I was praying for my boss. Um, she was going through a, a health issue mm-hmm. and got news from her when, when when I came back to work that all is good, all is clear, everything is good with her. Praise cool. God. And uh, so praise God for that. I'm um, also just, uh, you know, prayerfully needing help on my marathon training. And uh, uh, it's been going great with the exception of this Sunday. It just I just felt like I regress so bad to last year i don't know what happened i woke up and it was just like what happened to my legs <laughs> it was just a bad day anyway you know just a little personal thing ah who knows hopefully i can rebound as as we go through the week but um adrian when is it february 23rd rogelio's birthday it so i gotta get the february run done right 23rd. away it's so we, <laughs> so we can go have his birthday party and i'm not totally you know dying well as that's... you would say i'm dying you know, part of my soul might be oh, might, might might leave me <laughs> at the end of the run, but no, I've been doing better. I intend to finish it sooner, and that way we can, of course, celebrate his birthday. But um, I want to pray for uh, a couple of uh, people. Uh, first off, I know uh, I want to pray for uh, uh, Ms. Melissa Drayton's grandmother um, and family. Uh, Grandma fell. Broke her hip, oh. and uh, oh. it's 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 a struggle right now. And I know uh, our, our brother Joe sent this oh, message no. out to the men's ministry. So we're praying for uh, Grandma, for Melissa's Grandma, for sure, and uh, for her hip. And uh, you know, we'll 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 see what happens. There, but definitely praying for her. And on a personal note, I do want to pray for one of my uh, students. Um, her name's Cassandra. Unfortunately, she hasn't been back since Thanksgiving. She's uh, 
uh, been out, and I mean, I can't specifically say why, but um, I'm, you know, this is this. She's an awesome kid, and uh, my heart goes out to her and her family right now, and uh, just want to pray for her for her well-being, and uh, praying that I, you know, we all get to see her very soon. So okay. that's where I'm at, and again, just grateful for God's blessings for my wife, my kids, and you know, our dog, I guess, and uh, yeah, she's all right. Zena. Oh, I'd like to pray for Zena too, because. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes Zena has nightmares and it'll wake me up and like yeah, she cries. Okay, uh, she cries. Oh yeah. And like and and I don't I feel so bad sometimes. I have to wake up like Zena, and she'll come and she'll like I'll sit on the floor and I'm like half asleep yeah. and we fall asleep on each other for like twenty minutes. But I just I feel bad for her. I don't. It's probably because she got hit by that truck. I'm not gonna lie, because <laughs> it's been happening ever since then. But I sometimes she does that and I hope she's yeah. okay. So well, she's like a cat. Zena. She's got several more lives, so it'll be okay. Kidding, Val. Kidding. Well, she acts like a cat. I swear our dog <laughs> acts like a cat. It's it's unreal. And she got hit by a truck a couple years back. Long story, Gus. I'll tell you. Okay, later, man. It's just right. not, not one of my proudest moments as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I, I get a little PTSD thinking about it. Like, I have nightmares. Anyway. She came home. That's the she point. Came home. She came home. She's alive. Home. She's okay. Oh, I remember that when you she know, got out. She had a slightly broken yeah. vertebrae, but she healed, and she's great now, but, you know, physically. But PTSD. Yeah, well, who knows? Right Maybe I just blame Val. I mean, it's a tornado of a room when you walk in there. Maybe she's... My room's clean, my room. For the, an hour. No. Two, <laughs> no. The next no, maybe 57 right. days, who knows? Maybe that's what's going that's on. That's probably what it is. Probably scared of the room. No, it's not. Anyway, again, we're glad you could join us for R&R. &R. And yes. again, if you do have prayer requests and praises, please drop them in the chat. Any questions during the study, please, please ask us. Or any comments you may have, we could definitely use a help on this. Sometimes sometimes the wording on these uh, <laughs> chapters is, it, it can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll do the best uh, we can to navigate through these waters. But again, with, with God, you know, all things are possible, right? With, it is Christ who strengthens us. And so... With that, let's go ahead and pray. Are we ready? Yeah. All right, let's bow our heads. Good Father in heaven, thank you so much, God, for bringing us back onto the study for R and R, Lord. We've uh, been in and out the last month or so, Lord. We're praying that we can be consistent here and mm -hmm. just try to deliver uh, the best study that we can for those that are watching. Not only for them, but for us as well, Lord. We're also learning as well. We're discovering Your Word every each and every day as we study and we read. Not only to be uh, keepers of your word but to to do our best to be doers of your word as well and you've heard everybody's prayer requests and praises tonight lord we pray that all our praises make you smile god we hope it, it you know makes you even blush of that if you're even capable of that lord we, we we love you very much for taking care of us keeping us healthy and safe and again helping us navigate the the hardships of life and helping us to overcome all the challenges that that come to us on a daily basis, Lord. Some of us uh, are hit harder with things than others, Lord, but we're definitely praying for those that we love and care about and for those that are watching, Lord. Um, you know, this study is, is near and dear to our hearts, Father, and all we're praying for and asking, Lord, is that you hear our prayer requests and not only do a good study, but all our prayers as well, Lord. We lift them up to you, Lord, and we place it in your hands because... If, should we do these things all on our own without your help, we're, we're going to fail, and we're going to fail miserably, God. So please be with us in the study. We pray that you send the Holy Spirit to guide us and to help us interpret your word and to give us uh, understanding and wisdom and discernment for what your word is uh, trying to express to us at this moment and to everybody watching online. We ask that you please take care of us, keep us healthy and safe, Lord, and we pray that... Uh, uh, our prayer requests uh, can be answered and we again we understand that it's on your timing and not ours and perhaps you can provide uh, provide a better way or a better opportunity uh, for us to capitalize on whatever it is that we need to lord in order to be a blessing to somebody else yeah. in this world in our lives and in our worlds lord we thank you for all this and in the name of jesus we pray amen, amen. amen. all right ready ready yes here we go chapter 11 Job, Eov, Eov. Are you ready, Val? Eov. You start us out verse by verse. It'll be you, Gus, and me, and then I'll pause in a few verses for steady questions. Here we go. Let's okay. do this. Then Zophar, the Namathite, 
mm -hmm. answered and said, Should not the multitude of words be answered? And should a man full of talk be vindicated? Should your empty talk make men hold their peace? And when you mock, should no one rebuke you? For you have said, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in your eyes. But oh, that God would speak and open his lips against you. Mm. That he would show you the secrets of wisdom, for they would double your prudence. Know therefore that, a God, that God exacts from you less than your iniquity deserves. Sauce. Keep going, though. Can you search out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than heaven, and what can you do? Deeper than Sheol, and what can you know? Their measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Let's let's stop there for a second. I I, I think it's I think Zophar seems like he's had enough. Yeah. I think he's already just tired of all the back and forth, and he's he's letting he's letting his friend he's letting Job have it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, for me, I, I was I was kind of going through this, and and I just think that like he he just wants. I don't know, sending Job a sense of urgency to like, hey, man, like you really need to, you just need to, just, you just need to stop this nonsense, all right? This is all, all this talk that you're giving us is just going nowhere. Just fess up to what you did, you know. What do you know? <laughs> what know did what you did. do, right? Right? Yeah. You, what do, you just got to just fess up, man. Just let it out. And let's be done with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That That's kind of what I was, the vibe I was getting from uh, Zophar. You know, what do you think, though? Honestly, I think I think he, he's being he, he's being honest for sure. Yeah. I mean, part of me wants to defend Job and be like, "Well, you're not the one going through all of this," because I'm pretty sure his friend would do the same as Job is doing. Yeah. Maybe, probably not even as stay as strong as he, because there's no one else like Job. Remember? I know. Um, but and God I think, said that. <laughs> well, right. That, God. God. God, that, God okay, it quoting, wasn't. God. It wasn't people. It was God. Yeah. Told mm -hmm. Satan, told his whole, the entire heavenly court or mm -hmm. ho, or, or the, 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 court, the, yeah. the the sons of God, mm -hmm. right? We talked about in chapter one. I always go mm -hmm. back to that. He told everybody, hey, right. you seen my guy, Joe. Mm -hmm. That's my guy mm -hmm. right there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think I think God sent his friend honestly and spoke through him to like, you know, like tell to like stay strong. You know, I think he mm. used it more as like a, like a spokesperson kind of for him. Because, you know. It's, I love it. It's like he's questioning everything. I love when he, que like, he's questioning everything. Mm -hmm. He's always, like, giving questions, kind of. I love, love doing that, too, because it's like, um, it's like you say this and this, and you've said all of this before, right. yet here you are doing this. I mean, right? this guy's a great critical thinker. Uh, oh, Job, sure. Job is just, his, his. And I think this is his friend getting him back on track. And what, I, what really got to me was right. Like, cause it makes sense. Like, I think of this too, cause it's like, can you like the reverse? I said, um, can you search out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than heaven. What can you do? And and you know, when you continue, it's like, well, God's power is like you don't know what He has in store for you. No one ever, no one does, mm -hmm. no one ever will. That's right. only up to God. Like, what you know? It's kind of um. It's like, you don't know what's going on, so don't judge it so quickly. At yeah. the same time, it's like, well, yes, admit what you've done, but at the same time, you don't know what he wants, what it is he wants out of you. That's true. And why he's letting things happen. It's and that's a reason. And, and that's the hard part is that sometimes it's like, again, I go back to Romans eight twenty eight. You know, all things come together for those that love and believe God. It's not the exact words, but very similar to that. And uh, yeah, and and it's tough because it's like, well. What is it? What what's what's next? Like, what is it that I should look forward to? How can I look past this? You know what I mean? What's what's the end in mind? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's tough sometimes to see. And it's I think that's where Job's at. He's he's at a point where it's like, man, I I can't see the end here. All I know is where I want to go. <laughs> yeah. Gus, what do you think? I look at so far, and I, I'm listening to what he's saying, and 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 you know, um, I think on the surface you would think, man, this guy's kind of a he's a jerk. You know? It seems that way. Yeah, it kind of mm -hmm. seems that way. As a matter of fact, and even if you look at what he is saying, kind of, it almost seems like he's minimizing Job's su suffering in the sense that, you know, he's kind of calling him, you know, man full of words, man full mm -hmm. of talk, 
multitude of words be answered, you know, yeah. uh, even you're mocking God and you said your doctrine is pure and mm -hmm. clean, but that God should come and speak to you. I think it's more than, than him superficially being a jerk, but I think it's what you said. I think he's come to a point now where he's saying, we're done. Or, or you know, and, and which puzzles yeah. me because we're on chapter eleven, and, and we're like we gotta go to chapter forty. <laughs> what? So I know. It's like, wait, really? Is this not ending now? It never ends. Right. It's like no. You think okay, okay, they'll forty two. Forty two. Right. So you imagine seven days are behind you. Who knows how long this has been already since chapter one or two? Maybe yeah, it's I been mean, a night or two. I don't know. Man, maybe. Well, maybe. But oh no, it's been longer. Now. It's been longer. Maybe it's probably been longer. Yeah. And so with that being said. I mean, technically thinking, you're a fourth of the conversation through, and he's pretty much saying, you know. Yeah, I honestly, I just feel so bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel so bad because, I mean, you th you're you reading these words now, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, okay, it can't be that hard. But we got to remember, Job is in physical and mental pain, like sores right. all over his Yeah, we, or what we, is gotta, it we can't forget. Sores. Yeah, sores, sores, sores all over his body. But it's like mm. all over. Like, yeah. imagine, yeah. like, like, you know, like, we're at a paper cut and it hurts and your yeah. like, whole day's ruined. Yeah, this is worse. Yeah, this is <laughs> it's worse. It's worse. It's everywhere. And so I feel bad because it's like, well, yes, you know, Job has, like, I can't blame him. Like, he's staying, he's staying mm -hmm. faithful so long. And it, it seems like he's still faithful. It's just now he's actually venting. He's letting out. He's like, why is this happening to me? Yeah. And then, and you know, he's go, he's thinking of all, while still going through the pain. Like, he has not, like, what, gotten sleep? Is that something it said? Mm -hmm. I just, I feel so bad. And then for the friend... I mean, I mean, I guess it like it makes sense as to why he's saying this. Like, why are you saying this when you're always like, um, so, like talking good about God and why you should stay faithful and stuff. Right. And then you say all of this, and it's like, well, you don't like know what it's for and right. stuff. Like, like what Dad said, like to confess and stuff like that. What have you already done? Like, mm -hmm. ask for forgiveness and stuff. But at the same time, you gotta keep in mind what you know, Job, his physical pain's going through. Like, you gotta like. Right. It's so hard to think of that and then read these words and then like put up like that's how much pain he's in like it feels like no. you can't you can't imagine it. Well, oh, yeah, you, cu you couple that in the torment that he's feeling on the inside from right. losing his family, right? His mm -hmm. kids basically and you know and it's just, then add the fit. Yeah, like the physical pain to it. It's just like mm -hmm. like brother, how can you just keep questioning me? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, look, so man. So imagine like what he's feeling like his head like oh. Yeah. I mean, you're right, but... And, and let's not forget the magnitude of what has been lost, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it started off with, he's a rich man. And, and, you know, for all intents and purposes, okay, he's wealthy. Um, not that he doesn't have any concerns or anything. As a matter of fact, it says he did have a lot of concerns, especially when his kids would have parties. Remember, he'd go mm -hmm. over there and kind of not just clean up after them, but he would, like, spiritually clean up after spiritually them Spiritually well. and pray for them <laughs> right. all the time. So, so he had concerns about it. Um, but then he loses... His wealth, yeah, in one, boom, one swoop, and then moments later loses the human help, the the the, the servants, the, the and, and and keep in mind, he, I'm sure he was close to them as well. I'm sure, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, if he, if there's no one yes. like him, correct, he's a Christ-like person. How can you not gravitate toward a person like this and, right. and, and a personality like, like that? And the very people he prayed for, they're gone now. His family, they're gone. And then you're right. Now he's got these sores and all these things are going on. The gravity here. I'm thinking to myself, um, yeah, you're right. I don't blame Job for being in the position that mm -hmm. he's in at all. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Should, I guess the question is this. I'm getting at, should the friends be more patient? Or is or his friends, do we, I mean, I think that's a good question. But do we, as friends, if you were a friend and you saw your friend, his house was blown up in his yeah, I mean, everything his, bad that could have all happened, his, happened all his family are dead and now he's suffering from third degree burns or whatever fed to toe and how what? how patient are we exactly and that's something to consider because mm -hmm. how can they empathize how can they yeah. really how can they actually how I can have, they unless they've been through it or they something have, similar right. I, yeah. it doesn't say anything like that I mean not, not, not at least maybe not to this caliber, mm -hmm. right? I mean, oof. that's a good question. It is a good question. I so mean, I just, I just wonder where, where, <laughs> how do you handle a person like Job and what know, he's going through? Sometimes you can't, but I think the mm. best thing to do, I mean, and if you like, you know, you got 
like for me, well for me I got a lot of friends that go through a lot of different things a lot mm. of different people different situations and you know you can always imagine what they're going through the best you can and with me since like my imagination's like insane I like put myself in my in their shoes and it, yeah. it's it's horrible what they go through and I I um I I got feel bad for them but I'm always there the best way I can be which is to listen Mm. and ask for what it is that I could do and if it's nothing and just to listen then the best thing you can do is just listen and be there in general for like anything they need um for this to be happening I don't know again we don't know how long this has mm-hmm. been going on with Job right. I think since you know this is happening to your friend and it's not happening to you the best you can like do and is to be patient I mean I'm pretty sure it's you know it's hard like with all like the complaining wanting, but how could he not complain like that's something they need to realize too yeah. is that because I'm like imagine if you're going through that like you do the same thing you probably do it way worse than he would mm. if I'm being completely honest and I think like the way he comes off is yeah he, he seems a bit like a jerk right which mm. you know I don't know why you'd want a friend as like a jerk as a friend but I mean <laughs> um, I think I think the words he's saying could help Job in terms of to get him thinking like oh you're right like let me like stay on track like Mm. yes i can grieve but at the same time like still have faith in god and don't um say something that you know probably shouldn't be said kind of a thing but i i do think that there's a certain way to say things like that to keep people going keep them faithful instead of you know how you say it it's not what you say it's how you say it's how you say it yeah you know, and it's interesting, like, he he mentioned something, like, it, it, I, I want to read all the way to verse 12, and then I'll, I'll, I'll ask it. Go go ahead and go to verse 10 now, girl. All right. <clears throat> if he passes by, imprisons, and gathers to judgment, then who can hinder him? For he knows deceitful men. He sees wickedness also. Will he not then consider it? For an empty-headed man will be wise when a wild donkey's colt is born a man. Okay, stop Stop right there for a second. Now, as, as I was reading this, and this kind of goes uh, go, going back to verse 7 through 12. To me, I was looking at these verses and I thought, okay, this guy, Zophar, is somehow, I, I don't know. When I read it, it seemed like he's trying to explain God to him. Mm-hmm. He's trying to explain who God is, what he's about to Job, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, it's it's in a, in a sense, maybe, maybe not... Maybe trying to condescend, Joe, but it's like, look, this is who God is, you know. He knows when we're being wrong. It's like he's trying to say, dude, it's your fault without saying it's your fault. (laughs) But God knows everything. But God knows right. He knows right. You know what I mean? It's your fault. It's not your fault, but it's not God's fault. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and and it just seems like, um, I don't know, he's trying to use... I don't want to say God against them, but just just use God in a way that maybe he would never consider or or Job's never seen before, you know what I mean? Maybe he has seen, but just not in that moment. You know, there's so much going on with everything. Like, he's feeling all these emotions, you know, he probably hasn't Mm -hmm. thought about it. And and Mm -hmm. now that you mentioned that, could it possibly be that Job's continued faith or Job's continued uh, sustenance in God in a way he, 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 he still favors could that also be getting under their nerves too? And and what I'm trying to say is this, well, you know, here's these friends listening to him say, "Well, you know, you're righteous." You're, and he even says it earlier on. You know, mm-hmm. you say your doctrine is pure and uh, and you're clean in his eyes. I don't remember him saying that exactly. Mm-hmm. I do remember him talking about his doctrine being blameless or something, not pure. And but I'm mm-hmm. thinking the friends are listening to Job kind of taking on a um, more of a self righteous type, or at least their opinion mm-hmm. might be that. And so now I'm wondering, are they getting, are they growing tired of his faith, maybe? And I'm thinking to the point where they're saying, you know, enough, dude, let's let's get a blame party going on and blame God or something. Not that he's saying that, but, right? But it's almost like you, you're right. He's using God. There's almost as a sense of you're right, like that God's being used somewhere to be against Job. Yeah. And, you know, it's... And I wonder... Say? Imagine a friend coming up to you and saying, yeah. hey, you know, your God ain't that good. Look at... And he starts doing this stuff to you. No yeah, you need, you need to see God the way I see God. Yeah. Who does? No, how I saw the, it. The God no, you... what did you see? Was... Well, I... I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. I read it, and what it says is like, okay, Job, you say all, like, these good things about God. You're very faithful. You're always mm-hmm. like this. Which mm-hmm. maybe it might have gotten the friend a little sick, because, you know, you hear it all the time. Sick and tired, which, yeah. you know, I mean... <laughs> I don't, I don't know. That's yeah. probably what he, they would be feeling. 
But um, I, I, where it says, like, the end of verse 6, um, therefore that God exacts you from less than your iniquity deserves more. Kind Ooh, of like, yeah. you know, like, maybe God's not punishing you enough at this point. Like, I think yeah. of it more as a joke <laughs> way, the way I say it in my brain. I don't uh-huh. know how he means maybe it. Maybe being sarcastic. Yeah, I think I, I, as a very sarcastic person, that's how I took it. And mm. um, I thought... And then after that, it continues to, like, explain, almost explain God in a way, you know? Which I don't know, like, how faithful this um, friend was to God, or maybe he learned it from Job, because, you know, he talks about it so much. (laughs) Um, Oh, sure. But I, I don't know, I thought of it more as, like, I don't know, I read it in a way that's more of, like, don't, like, you can't, or you've done all of this, like, why are you giving up now? kind of a thing mm. like isn't like you don't know what god's plan is and you've said this before but you always stay faithful kind of a thing well what should stop you now you know and it's like i don't know that's kind of how i took it i didn't take it more as like trying to blame god on him. i think it's yeah. more of using god as to show him why he should still keep on going mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. interesting yeah especially where he where he says that i mean he does yeah. say when i when i read that i was like Whoa. for they would double your prudence and there is basically just saying you know yeah, know therefore that God exacts from you less than what you deserve, what your iniquity deserves. Now, that's a harsh. So I mean, saying, "Hey, brother, you know what you're going through isn't yeah. anything that you should be going through." Right. And you think about it, sin. Well, with how much we is, sin, which makes sense. Yeah. But God's too loving to do that. Right. And look what He did for us. Right. So even our iniquity. Which is probably also what Job's thinking. Yeah. Very Christ-like. That's very, yeah, that's very, very. Uh, um, still, was it in Romans that still saved us while we were yet sinners? Yeah, we were still sinners. Romans. That's right. I don't know. Which that one. is right. It's in Romans. I know that much. <laughs> in Romans. Who knows? Maybe we'll study Romans after this. What I, when I keep laughed? referring to it so much. Right. That'll be an interesting one. But I think you hit on something there, Val, because I think that's yeah. a very Christ. Um, that's a very uh, Christ-centered. Um, uh, it could be taken improperly but i guess if you look at it this way our sins our sins do exact more than what oh yes god calls for god is wow yeah you know, you could place a, I, I could place my name in there and i look at it and i say mm-hmm. to myself you know when you think about it yourself it's like well he does exact less than what my sin is called mm-hmm. for we deserve death. <laughs> right, right. All of us deserve death. Right. Oh, yeah. All have fallen short of the, the glory. glory of God. And Romans as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm going to Romans today, man. Oof. You know what made me laugh, though, was verse 12, when it said, For an empty-headed man will be wise when a wild donkey's colt is born a man. I thought I thought it was funny because it's, I mean, it makes sense in it my was... head because I, it's like, um, like, it's kind of like, um, What's the word for it? I swear I'm good at reading. It's like, ugh. it's like a comparison. It's a comparison. Like a metaphor right? or? What's it called? <laughs> What's it comparison? Called? Besides that. Similar? No. Like when you're just giving a metaphor or something or when you give it a... Venn oh, diagram, okay, Valerie? No, not know. a Venn diagram. For that, okay, for an empty-headed man would be wise when a, uh, when a wild donkey's colt is born a man. So when a donkey's baby is born a human, you know, it would it, it that's where the only time when men would be wise enough or something. I don't know. It made me laugh. That's the point. It made me laugh because I found it interesting. I see here that he's calling him dumb. Basically, yeah, he's, he's, ca- he's calling dumb, everyone dude. dumb. And he's. <laughs> but I wonder. I wonder. And I don't know this answer. I don't know this answer. If someone knows it, please. But why? Why that? Uh, why that example of when a wild donkey donkey's colt is born a man? That's just kind of mm-hmm. interesting. He went that way, you know. And, and what exactly did that mean? I mean, it's just kind of strange that he uses that as an example to show how empty-headed, how an empty-headed man would be wise when that happens. So is he basically saying an empty-headed man will never be wise because Maybe. no yeah. donkey will ever have a. I think that's human. what it is more. It's like, well, you know, an empty-headed mm-hmm. man, like you know empty-headed you know yeah. they won't be wise just as like you know a donkey's baby won't be born a human right so it's it's, it's kind of saying like you know i don't know <laughs> but yeah yeah interesting <laughs> to say the least i mean it, it, so far it's got a way of putting words together and i'll tell you that much it's you know but uh but let's continue on let's wrap it up 13 through 20 it's not a very long chapter Mm-mm. so 
We'll see where, uh, who left off last. Who's the last one? Was it me? Mm. Go back, yeah. Yeah, go on 13. Okay. If you would prepare your heart and stretch out your hands toward him. If iniquity were in your hand and you put it far away and would not let wickedness dwell in your tents. Then surely you could lift up your face without spot. Yes, you could be steadfast and not fear. Because you would forget your misery and remember it as waters that have passed away. And your life would be brighter than noonday. Though you were dark, you would be like the morning. And you would be secure because there is hope. Yes, you would uh, dig around you and take your rest in safety. You would also lie down and no one would make you afraid. Yes, many would court your favor. Yes, but the eyes of the wicked will fail and they shall not escape and their hope loss of life. No, he's not wrong. No. no. <laughs> I mean, he has, I mean, the wicked will have their day. You know, vengeance belongs to the Lord. It says that somewhere. I couldn't tell you where. It's not Romans. But, uh, <laughs> um, but vengeance does belong to God. Yeah, but, so, you know, it just seems like a, a plea is made here, right? You know, he's making a plea to Job now, mm -hmm. you know, in, in his last, this last part of his, of his uh, conversation with him. Um, you know, it's like, look, if you just let it go, this is what could happen now, right? Right. Let it go, you know, and, and, and this is where God's going to take you. And perhaps, perhaps you'll find peace. Perhaps you'll find, you know, comfort for, you know, moving forward, you know, for the rest of your life, if you will. Yeah. You know what I mean? What do you guys think? Well, when you say a plea, I thought of him like, like begging almost like. Well, like, I, which, which kind of is, I thought I, like in, in my head, I envisioned like a picture be. of him like, um, what's well, like, like being like, can you just, you know, admit what you did or at least continue to be faithful and pray and help him for you know for healing and stuff like this so that you can be okay again yeah. what do you think yeah I, I think he's the same what Valerie said he's saying hey look Job come clean come clean come clean let's get this get on your knees let's do this because you're not you're holding something back obviously mm -hmm. you're holding something back Job come clean Beg for forgiveness from God, mm -hmm. and um, your misery. You remember your misery, or you're not even going to be miserable. You're going to have a memory as of your misery, mm -hmm. and it's going to that will even pass away, like water. Uh, what do you say? It's waters that have passed mm -hmm. away. So, uh, I'm telling you, you know, look, your life in an instant would be brighter than noonday. Though you were dark, and you'd be like the morning. Mm. You know. Yeah, he's pretty much telling him. Let's let's come clean. Let's just we're, we're done now. Come and like like stop bearing all this weight on your shoulders already. You know, take the load off and just just come clean. Let it go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I just wonder. Like, obviously, we're gonna learn what Job's gonna answer back in the next chapter next week. But like, I always wonder. Like, what is he thinking when they're speaking to him like this? Like, what's going through his mind? Like, he's all like, man, these guys are. These guys do not have are clueless beyond all belief, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but I would wonder if Job was like, well, are they are they making sense? And is what they're saying is there some kind of value to the advice that they're giving me? You know what I mean? And is is there any way, shape, or form that I can take what they tell me and perhaps I could, you know, find a way to carry on? You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything else, guys? Yeah, you know, just um, just you know, it's it, this guy is no no bars hold or no hold bars. What do you say? No, no bars hold or no no holds barred. Yeah, what yeah, try no hold barred. Yeah. Yeah, this guy's um, what? he's not mixing words. No, his friend is not mixing words. Um, hurtful maybe, mm -hmm. truthful yeah. What's his purpose? Who knows. Um, she's brutally honest he's just being brutally honest mm -hmm. and I like how he ends it but the eyes of the wicked will fail and they shall not escape and their hope what is that the it's loss death. of life death basically saying look do this come clean 
You'd be redeemed. And not only will you be able to lie down, no one would make you afraid. And people, many would then count your favor. Mm-hmm. All this has gone bad. You come clean. Mm-hmm. Many will look upon you with favor. It's like they'll look past all this for you, man. Yeah. It'll... But even the eyes of the wicked will fail and they shall not escape. So he's basically saying there's a time limit here now. Mm-hmm. It almost seems as if he's saying, how much time do you have, Job? Yeah. Well, that's true. Make, make peace with God. Well, that, then that kind will, of changes you hear that a little a lot. bit. Cause like, yeah, maybe he's being brutally honest, but maybe he, like, he thinks like, he like believes that, you know, with everything Joe's like physically and everything, like mm-hmm. Joe's going to die. Yeah. He doesn't want his friend to die if they're friends. Right. Right. I mean, I don't know. He's kind of a jerk, but. Especially die without asking for redemption. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Mm. So I'm wondering if he's even thinking. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It just seems too time constrained. Like there's too much. Like he's trying to tell me, "You got to hurry this up, dude." I'm like, not sure like, about. Yeah, like when you know, like you have so many things on your mind. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. let's do this. Let's do this. And then your mind starts to like swell up, or like your brain, and you feel it. I feel like maybe that's what he's saying. And then it wanders, and then you start doing different things at once, and then you mm-hmm. can't finish them. Yeah. Right. That's the worst feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I almost felt like that. At, today. Your brain's going like you a thousand Sunday. miles an hour. No, well, yeah, I felt like that Sunday for sure. But like even at work today, it was just like I realized after school, kept getting things ready for the next day, and I realized, wait a minute, I need this and this, and it, my brain swelled up, and I was like, oh my goodness, I, I yeah, you know, I, I, I can get very detailed when it comes to work and how I want to do things and what I need and what I prepare for in advance. And today was like, oh my goodness, like. It was like that. Yeah, that that's my mind sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. That's how my mind's been with like the whole welding thing. Mm-hmm. Like oh like like I were like well, we don't actually have that much time because we work in class. Mm-hmm. Um, which I have more than like two hours in class, but still it's just like. Yeah, it's not enough. It's not enough sometimes, and I realize it, and then so we're on a deadline. I mean, we're ahead of everybody else, but at the same time, it's still like... There's a deadline coming up. Mm-hmm. And it'll I'm, get here. It'll it's get like here destiny arrives time. all the same, whether you're yes. ready or not. That's, that's right. kind of how my mind went, so then I had to, like, pick it as slowly. I was like, okay, let's do this and this and this and this, and then, yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, but, no, yeah, like, that's kind of what it is. <laughs> well, yeah. So next Wednesday, everybody, we're yes. going to find out Job's very long response. It's now It goes, I think, two or three chapters, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, just when you think the friends, I don't want to say they haven't cornered, but they have maybe a, a mic drop moment. Well, Job <laughs> comes with like several. <laughs> right, right. Uh-huh. And it's, it's uh, it, again, it's, it's powerful and it's interesting to see so much dialogue so much back and forth and like gosh how 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 can these guys keep going right one way or the other and just again understanding job's pain and his his loss and just you know how how can how's he going to pull through and how's god going to get him through it right that's what you know something to think about and consider especially those of you who are maybe you're having your job moments maybe you're you're struggling with something and you know, and maybe to the degree of Job's, what Job's going through. And uh, so, you know, consider Job and again, consider the Almighty above and, you know, really just let go and let go to God and let God be God and do his thing with you. And uh, we'll see what wonders he works there. Absolutely. Yeah. So with that said, also uh, this coming Friday, we have an agape feast. Oh, right. For... Anyone who's invited, <clears throat> along with communion, it's a special one this Friday evening, 6.30. Please join us. Uh, we'll be in our fellowship hall, right? Only? Yeah. So, well, no. So actually, it's going to be um, back and forth. It's going to start here. No one's going to be allowed in the fellowship hall. And you know, those of oh, us who've been to them, they're beautiful. Am I right? They're pretty cool. Mm. They're pretty. So they're really, really cool. So the surprise will come when mm-hmm. we're done with the service right here, what have you. And then um, I believe they're going to move them over to the... Agape Hall or Agape Feast? Yeah, Agape or Hall, Agape Hall Agape Feast. Yeah, we can't it. say much other than you got to come by. <laughs> you better, yeah. Uh, yeah. And gorgeous. it's Friday. Friday night. Friday night. Yeah, Friday night. 6 yes. 30. You're Friday at night. the El Paso Northeast Church, right? Friday the 13th, really? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but please join us. We'll be there. And we'll have communion. And of course, though, if you can't 
make it for whatever reason Friday. Uh, we're still going to have regular services Saturday mm -hmm. on Sabbath, and uh, we will have a communion after worship service. It's going to be a little different than we have in yeah. the past due to the the uh, the agape uh, feast. Of course, if you can make it Friday, we will for sure have communion for right. those on on Saturday morning. So, and on the same note, we got new Bibles. We got new Bibles. Look at that. Did we I was looking, yeah. yeah. I was this looking is at them. I was home. Thinking, yeah, look, at look, at look at that. Oh, look at this. And then nice. Look at that. No, wait, wait. There, there's a logo there, Gus. There it is. Let me see that. <gasps> no way. Cool. When did this happen? <laughs> I have no it says, idea. It says, this is home El Paso Northeast SCA. Let's territory. see if I can zoom That's in. That's our logo, guys. Well, wait, can I so put it camera? So whoever did this, I'm, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, hold who, it up to the camera. I'm not it's sure it's kind of hard. You guys did a wonderful, beautiful job. Look at that. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Perfect. This yeah. is home, El Paso Northeast SDA. We got it. We're published. <laughs> we are published people. It's so and, and it's gorgeous. throughout. Yeah, so I thought maybe it was one Bible or two or nothing. No, they're all over. The stuff. That's pretty yeah. cool. That's right. That's pretty cool. Pretty soon we'll be worldwide people. Right. I'm just right. kidding. <laughs> Who knows? Hey, it's all in God's hands. But yeah. yeah, we got more Bibles. And again, please join us again. Hey. You know, join us for Reflect Revive, Tuesday night Bible studies, Friday night Vespers. Man, we're here, man. Uh, contact us, 209-2730. Call or text, you know, whatever's on your mind. If you need help with prayer, you know, we got a lot of great people here, man. And, uh, you know, just walk through those doors. And, again, you'll be a visitor the first time. But after that, you're you're going to be family to us and we'll treat you as such. So. And if you're new to the belief in Christ, come on, yeah. you know, call, call the church. Uh, we'll hook you up with um, somebody, and um, you know we can we can learn we can learn together. Even those, you know, I've I've been in the faith for yeah. a bit, but I'm still learning things every day. All I feel brand new sometimes, but so yeah, new to the faith, or you just want a little bit more clarification. Come yes, on. absolutely, come visit us. So with that said, let's go ahead and close out in prayer. Gus, would you be able to close? Absolutely. Out? Let's bow our heads. Please. Yes. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again for giving this opportunity for us to gather, Lord. Worship you in name, Lord. Edify others towards you, God. Mm. Almighty Father, thank you for all the blessings you've given to us this week, Lord. Lord Almighty Father, we understand tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Next hour isn't guaranteed. But what is guaranteed, Lord, is your love and your salvation, Lord. And thank you for that, Almighty Father. Thank you. With that, Lord, we praise you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've given to us, God. And God, we ask that you give us the rest of the remainder of the week. Beautiful week, Lord. And we will gather here once again this this coming Sabbath evening, the Sabbath morning, uh, so we can gather once again and worship you in name, Lord. And this, Lord, we ask for uh, traveling mercies on our way home, Lord, uh, that you be with us once again, God. And you've never, never have left us, Lord. Thank you. And this we praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Catch you next time, everybody. See ya.